Uh, hi there, welcome to movie three. This one is going to be pages five and six for the clock face that actually has a blend to it. And then I'm going to use three separate things on mine to gather for the outside Gaussian blur glow to give the inside logo a little pop and fizz. So what I want to do though is to fix something first. So I'm going back to the original movie file. That is the tutorial file so I can show you something. I'm going to turn off the clock face um, and we'll get to that in a minute or two. And I want to concentrate on that tail section because what the tail section, what I showed you last time was, was accurate, but not accurate. I know that sounds weird, but I'm going to go ahead and explain myself. Um, that, that was the original, uh, this was the tail as it appears. Okay. And I told you to work your way from an outer shape to an inner shape. Well, I did, but I didn't because the tail was a particular thing with the stripes going on the inside. And in this case, I was able to solve it a little easier using this method. Um, in order to get that orange fill, I originally drew the tail like this, okay? And then to get the orange one, all I did was I duplicated that stroke and turned it orange and I just uh, offset it to the inside just a little bit in order to get this shape which was the inside of the orange. And if I turn on the template file way at the top, you can see what I'm talking about, how that was the inside of the orange, okay? Now, um, I made it big enough so that the following could cover it up. So let me go back down to the tail and look at how now it makes sense, okay? But now how did I arrive at that? That's the whole key and it's not that hard. I had the original shape. What I did was I duplicated the original shape and I turned it, I turned the single stroke going to object path outline stroke into a compound path. Okay, then I just morphed it a little bit by moving the inside um, pieces in, uh, points in, and you can see how I matched that up pretty good. Okay, so so far all I have is, an, is, a, is a blue outer stroke that I went to object path offset path, not offset path, object path outline stroke. Then I drew all of these shapes and I'll show you the shapes in the layer palette. Look, there they are. They're just simple shapes. Now, what we have to do is unite all this together to make one shape. How do we do that? We select all of these elements right here and we remove the stroke and we add the fill of blue, making sure that the outline shape, let me compress that layer, making sure that the compound path right there um, is also no stroke, but just a fill. Then just go over to the Pathfinder and hit Unite. And now we have a beautiful, um, very clean um, blue part of the tail. And all I have to do is turn on the orange under part. So let me turn this off because this was my, um, uh, my duplicate copy that I was making for you. There's the one I made for the artwork and the orange underside where the orange underside is just a copy of the first stroke shrunk a little bit, okay? Just wanted to clarify that. Now, to do this next thing on page five, I already kind of have something prepared to show you. There is the, um, uh, the way that it's going to look after you blend it. Now I'm gonna um, take that off and I'm gonna show you this is the way that it was. Now follow the steps in scaling this circle now I scaled mine to 95% for that circle and I'll open them up so you can see my circles. Look at how I just have, if I'm circling right over here, look at how I have my yellow, orange, darker orange and purple. That's what I wanted to use for my blending capability here. Now, what it says in the handout is if you read, um, I don't really want to take the time to go there, but I think I will. If you go to, okay, let's get, to here so I can go back a little bit and go to the next page. If you go to here, you can see that um, I use specified, the blend options, specified steps of 150, okay, to make it a nice smooth blend. Now, how do we do that? We simply go like this. And I am gonna add one thing before I forget. Uh, let me turn off the logo so we can just see this thing work. In fact, I'll wireframe the logo. No, it's not the whole logo, that's the copy. Um, that's the trademark. There's my logo, okay. If I wireframe the logo, we can still see this work, okay? So I'm gonna go back down to the circles. Um, I'm gonna select all four circles, 
So you see how each one of those, let me hit command colon to turn off the guides. Each of one is a copy. Each one has four points. One of them can't have five points or the blend won't work right. They all have to have the same number of points. With that said, hit the W key to go to the blend tool, double click the blend tool and make it say specified steps, not smooth color, of 150. Once you have done that, and once you have placed in your circles the way they should be, or the way you want them to be with your colors, just simply start on the outside and click your way to the inside, and they will blend beautifully together. Now, that is going to take a long time to redraw every time you re-magnify the screen, so there's no reason to have it on all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it on until we get finished with the neon glow. Now, um, which isn't a neon glow, it's actually a Gaussian blur, but we'll call it um, a glow of the logo, okay? That's all I want to say. So let me unwire frame the logo. Now, what I had to do to get it to be this, to have it have a nice outer glow like this, and I haven't figured out why, but on some machines, Gaussian blurring amounts can be less. On some machines, they have to be more. Even on my one machine here, um, and I'll go ahead and tell you that this is a, that um, this white stroke on this particular file was Gaussian blurred to 5.8, but I had to go to 16 on the other file, and I can't quite figure out why I will, because I don't like when I don't know something, so I'll figure it out. But let's go to the main file, and I'll show you what I needed to do. I needed to grab a path of all the outside of this logo. Now, in order to do that, I needed the outer part of the tail, the outer part of the D, and the outer part of the tiger. In order to do that, here it was. So let me turn off the artwork for the glow, for the glow, for the logo. And now let's go down here to where I had my, in fact, I'll compress, no, I won't compress that. I'll go down here to where I had my, um, my three shapes, one, two, three, all separate shapes. Let me show you. There is the, there is the one shape of the tiger. There is the one shape of the D and then the shape of the tail. Now what I had to do was shift click on all three of those. See how they're all selected. Let me get as close as I can, kind of. Okay, well that's a little too close, but that's okay. Let me remove the stroke from all three and just add a fill of the same color. It doesn't matter what color. And it um, doesn't even have to be the same color actually. And in Pathfinder, click Unite. Now that I've made those into one shape, um, I have to now remove the fill, add a stroke of white, and in this case, I wanted this to be 18 points. So I'm going to go to 18 points. But before I do that, I need to, I'm going to do a smaller one on top of orange. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate it before I do this. I'll even double click the bottom one and I'll call it 18 points. And on the top one, I will call it 8 points because that's how much I want the orange one to be. So now let me go, um, in fact, I'll go 18 white, and let me go 8 orange. And then we're almost done. And then I'm going to show you how to use the appearance palette to re-enter in case you want to adjust your Gaussian blur. So um, let us turn off the 8 point orange stroke and click on the 18 point white stroke, which isn't 18 points yet. So let's go over here and hit 18 and turn it into 18, okay. With it selected, let me go back in size a little bit, or magnification, and let's go to Effect, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Now, I've already known on this file that 5.8 isn't gonna do it. Um, 16 will, will do it more or less fine. So it takes a little bit of a delay, and now I go in here, and now here is my, Takes, takes a second, there is my 16. Now, that's pretty good. I probably could go to 20. So I wanted you to see how I have to re-enter it. In comes the appearance menu. In the appearance menu, don't go back and add another blur. You'll have two of them there. So go into Gaussian Blur, and then you can adjust 16 to whatever you want. In this case, I'll make it 20. I'll click OK. It'll take a second to do its thing. And now there's 20. Now, what I want to do is go into the upper stroke, turn it back on, use the eyedropper, or just color it a nice bright orange. So I want to take um, that stroke and make it orange. I said that I needed to make it eight points in thickness. And now I want to take that and add a Gaussian blur, um, 
in my other file it was 3.8 so if I made 520 5.8 pixels 20 this one should be somewhere around I don't know 15 or 14 or 13 so let's go to effect blur Gaussian blur I guess the point is is you can adjust it in the appearance menu right so let's go um, 12 let's see if 12 is gonna do any good on that they don't have a preview so let's go ahead let's wait for a second okay now you can adjust the color at any time. So if I wanted to go into a little bit darker color, I could just take this and just go a little bit brighter like that. Now it'll adjust itself, just give it a second. Fine, okay, let's hit Command S to save the file. Now the logo glow should go underneath the logo layer. So let's go to, now turn on the logo art. Let's click away from it and you have a little bit of a Gaussian blur glow around the, um, the whole unit now I probably I don't like what's happening with the orange so I'll have to go in and readjust the orange for a moment I'll just turn off the orange and I'll show you how nice the white is and the orange will work I just need to go figure it out so there's a nice white glow around my whole object which is just um, in my case a united stroke that needed to be gathered from three different pieces then I made them fills with no strokes and used the Pathfinder unite command to make them into one shape uh, kinda remember that I never ruined the originals okay I always made copies because you always invariably you're gonna need to go back to a copy alright that was for page five and um, half of page six we're now going to go to the frame and the numbers.